Hi, I'm taking a picture of you. Hi, a video of you. Oh, that's a video? Yeah, from my cell phone. Oh. Hi, Mom. Hi. Hi, Helen. Our dear and beloved mom was from Jiangsu province on China's east coast. Mom had no photos from her childhood. We only know she was born in the small city of Changzhou in 1929, just before Japan's invasion of Manchuria. At this time of great turmoil, mom said that her parents gave her away because she was a girl. This was a source of great sadness for her all her life but she kept it a secret until she was already more than 70 years old. But mom was only six when her father left her in the city of Suzhou. A young married woman adopted mom, treating her well and sending her to school. But two years later, the long war with Japan began and mom's adopted mother gave mom away again, this time to a young woman in Shanghai named Huiling Wu. She became mom's sister and was our Auntie Betty. Mom stayed in Shanghai with Auntie Betty and her ailing mother, our Abu, from the time she was about nine or 10. Because of the war, mom couldn't go to school anymore. Instead, she helped care for Abu and Auntie Betty's sons, George and Peter, our cousins. They became mom's family. After World War II, China was torn apart by civil war. By 1949 in Shanghai, anyone who could flee went away as far as they could. Auntie Betty somehow got mom a passport and a visa. And at the last minute, she found a ticket for mom to join her and her family on the General Gordon, the last boat bound for America before Chairman Mao's army took Shanghai. Mom took in the sights of San Francisco and admired the new world and new city. But when her visa expired in six months, she would have to leave or be deported from the US. Luckily, she met John Yi, a banker from New York who was visiting his sister Florence Wong in Oakland. He was a kindly older man, and at age 20, mom was married. Mom moved to Chinatown, New York with John and soon had a baby boy, Henry, naming him after their location on 32 Henry Street. Her apartment had no bathroom and was in worse shape than any place Mom had ever lived in Shanghai. But it was a happy time in her life, and Mom found a small community of Shanghai dialect speakers like herself. That's how she met her best friend, Mei Bing Ching, and her sister Mary. The Shanghai friends would congregate at a curio shop on Doyers and Pell that still looks just like in the photo. In 1951, mom's husband John died suddenly of a massive stroke and she became a widowed young mother at age 22. A charming newspaper man and poet from Suzhou named Yi Chen Zia chased after mom and persuaded her to marry him. They moved to Irvington, New Jersey into a brand new apartment complex and soon had a baby girl named Helen. In the next two years, mom had two more boys, Hoyt and Hugo. At age 25, mom had four children under the age of five. Later, Humane and Haddon were born. After her own difficult childhood, mom cherished children above all. She wanted nothing more than to pour her love, care, and devotion into her kids and grandkids the kind of mother's love that she never received. Our mom gave special attention to every child she met. Though mom rarely had any money to spare, she somehow managed to scrimp and save to treat us to picnics, occasional birthday parties, special presents at Christmas, and to prepare the freshest and most delicious meals. Most of all, she gave us her unconditional love. Mom overcame many hardships without bitterness. She taught us so much to have an open and loving heart, to make something positive out of whatever we're dealt, and to be both courageous and kind. Thank you, Mom, for
for all the love you gave us. Willingboro, wow, so many memories, good and bad. As I reflect on mom's life though, many wonderful and beautiful memories come up for me about growing up in the borough. It's easy to also make fun of the borough, but thanks to mom, I can also look back with fondness on the only home I ever knew in my youth. Real loving, tender memories. Mom made the house a real home for us to return to, either for short visits or when I lived there between law school and the Air Force. The exterior photos of the house show the care and love she put into planting flowers, for example, always making the most of very limited resources, especially time, as she seemed to always be helping Dad with the baby novelties, making ribbons, bassinet skirts, merry ground tops, as she stayed up late to get it all done once we were in bed. Mom was completely devoted to raising the six of us, making our house a real home brought her happiness that was matched only by the joy of her grandkids later on. Then of course there was the food. It seemed like our lives centered around mom's divine culinary creations. Mom did slow down on the cooking of course as we left the nest, but when I lived with her in 2007-2008, the curried chicken, mapo tofu, and other dishes she made were just as delicious as the ones I remembered from our youth in the borough. No more wonton soup, though. Unconditional love, selflessness. That was mom. My earliest memories of mom are from when we lived in Metuchen, New Jersey, back in the early 50s when I was two or three years old. And I distinctly remember, too, seeing photos there, like these of mom in China or with other Chinese people, like our Aunt Betty. And I recall that, to me, These photos depicted a strange foreign world, very different from what we knew in New Jersey, part of another lifetime for mom. Henry, and maybe even Helen, might remember more about the days when this photo was taken. I'm entranced by it because it shows mom's luminous beauty. Mom never had any formal lessons to learn English and had been prohibited by our father from speaking Chinese to us for reasons he later regretted. But however limited her English proficiency was when we were kids, it never prevented us from talking about important issues with her, one of which was having survived the Japanese occupation of Shanghai during World War II, how she'd feel if I married someone who was of Japanese ancestry. She said, who I married made no difference so long as we loved each other. So that cleared the way for me to marry Leanne. I like to think this also helped clear the way for Helen and Leah, too, the other Chinese-Japanese couple in the family. And as you can see from these photos, mom loved the diversity that each of her kids brought into the family. Since we kids grew up without grandparents or an extended family, I was very glad not only that our kids got to know their grandparents on both sides of the family, but that mom and my mother-in-law, Shizui Miyasato, got to know each other and become good friends as well, too. Mom moved to California in 1998, shortly after the death of our father. For 19 years, she lived at Rossmore, a retirement community in the San Francisco Bay Area. Two of her children, Haddon and Helen, lived near Rossmore and were able to spend more time with mom and help look after her. The Bay Area was now the destination of choice for the Zia children, and many a family reunion was held there so that we could all spend time with mom and with each other. Mom changed dramatically after dad became convalescent and passed away. She was suddenly removed from his shadow and being forced to care for both him and herself, renewed her self-confidence. Dad's passing, combined with the fact that their children were now established in their careers and were able to support her financially, allowed Mom to finally relax and enjoy life as a grandma. Mom was able to travel with her kids to places like Lake Tahoe, Las Vegas, Mendocino, Monterey, 
and she even took a cruise to Alaska and Vancouver. As you can see from the photos, Mom was delighted to have her family around her, especially her grandchildren. She continued to pursue her love of photography on her trips and during family visitations, taking pictures and having photos taken of her with her family and friends. Mom's friendly and easygoing personality allowed her to befriend many of her fellow Rossmore residents, as well as many of her children's friends. Everyone who got to know Mom loved her, and she loved them. While Mom could not avoid the physical degradation that comes with age, she remained mentally sharp, and if anything, her spirit grew stronger and stronger as time progressed. She even became politically active, speaking out in favor of gay rights and against Trump. Never before had Mom cared about politics, but all the hatred of the Trump campaign got her blood boiling. And during the election, often the first thing that she would talk about was politics. What a dramatic change from a quiet homemaker in New Jersey to being a political firebrand in California. Moving to California helped Mom to finally emerge as an individual, and I think it was the best place for her to spend her final years. Our mom was the quintessential mother. She lived for her six children, Henry, Helen, Hoyt, Hugo, Humane, and Haddon, and she devoted her life to us. Well, that is at least until her 11 grandchildren came along. Then she took on the role of grandmother extraordinaire, known to her grandkids as Grandma Zia or Nai Nai or Abu. She loved nothing more than being with her children and her daughters-in-law and her son-in-law and watching her grandchildren grow into young adults and oh, how we loved her back. These photos are a testament to the thousands of pictures she took, arranging them lovingly into photo albums for each of us and also for her grandkids. She often said if there was ever a fire in her house, the only objects she needed to save were her treasured photo albums. She cherished the times with her family, including the visits with her sister Betty and her nephews George and Peter and their families. She was the nucleus of our family, the quiet but central force of the Zias. Wherever we went, from Queens, New York, to Shanghai, China, she was surrounded by people who loved her. We were so lucky to travel with our mom to destinations in the U.S. and Asia. She especially enjoyed returning to China after many years and fulfilling her dream of seeing the Great Wall. But her main focus of traveling was not so much about the sightseeing. She was mainly interested in just being with us and visiting her relatives. On the other hand, if the destination, such as Lake Tahoe or Las Vegas or Alaska on a cruise ship, happened to include a casino, then all the better, for our mom was quite fond of slot machines, which she could play for hours. Mom also loved flowers and was a wonderful gardener. She swore by Miracle Grow, and her rose bushes and flower beds were filled with huge impatiens and colorful annuals that were among the lushest and most beautiful in our town. I still remember her cutting long stems of her prized roses and fragrant peonies for me to bring to my elementary school teachers. It's no wonder I got such good grades. One of her favorite places was Longwood Gardens in Chadsford, PA, where she brought us as children and later visited again and again with two of her beloved grandchildren, Malin and Devon. My mom loved good food and ate almost everything as long as there was no cilantro in it. From duck heads and chicken feet to Shanghai soup dumplings, she introduced us to all kinds of foods and instilled in us the same love of diverse cuisine. Of course, Chinese food in particular. She was an amazing cook, although she didn't necessarily like just the act of cooking. For her, it was all about the family gatherings that resulted from her feasts. From her tiny kitchen in Willingboro, she created delicious Chinese dinners that could feed a crowd, which her children still dream about. Our mom made friends easily wherever she went and loved getting together with girlfriends from work. While living in Rossmore, she especially loved the time she spent with her best friend, Mary. (laughs) 
Other than getting her hair done at the beauty parlor every now and then, Mom had no vanity and, other than lipstick, seemed to use no makeup. I was reminded of how beautiful she was by these photos of her through the decades from when she was barely in her 20s until her late 80s, and her radiance changed not at all during that time. If she was aware of how beautiful she was, she never let on. Her smile remained the same throughout, a genuine reflection of her gentle and sweet personality. As her son, I didn't pay much attention to any of this when I was growing up, but now I wish I had, so I could have reminded her regularly just how beautiful she was as a person, inside and out.